Bankruptcy. I need you to court Paul Porter. You don't have some hot coals I could walk across instead? I don't like him either. He's always been dubious of me. I don't know if it's because I'm a woman or black, or maybe he just doesn't like Your overbearing nature? Your holier-than-thou attitude? This is not a joke, Harvey. How this is going to go down is he's I know he's going to worm his way in and then one day call for a vote. And when that day comes, every vote will count, even Paul's. Hardman is awesome. I mean, he um, brought in this omelet bar for the associates, but it's no big deal. Really good. This pineapple was growing on a plantation on Lanai yesterday. Do not trust it. Don't trust the pineapple. Hardman. Would you, come on. I don't want to. Are you serious? You're afraid of the pineapple? I know it's got a rough exterior, but it's all sweet on the inside, I promise. Come on, I love you, Harvey. It'll be good for you. See? Mm. It's spectacular. But this doesn't change the fact that this is what he does. He's coming back, and people are going to have to choose sides. Can I choose his side? Sure. Support a man you never met over a partner who knows you never went to Harvard, knows you're not really a lawyer, and is keeping you on anyway. Jessica, it is. Ready to serve. I need you on Paul Porter. A bow tie guy? Every case he has. Read, summarize, find weaknesses. I want to know everything he knows. Was he getting fired? Nope. He's getting lunch. Hardman is back. Jessica doesn't want to go back to the kitchen. Jessica Pearson was never the housewife. You know where my office is, Harvey? 46. I've been knocked down three floors in five years on Jessica's watch. We have to look into that. I don't want a new office. I want respect. What you want is for someone to help you with Madison 25. You've done your homework. You are about to lose a huge client, Paul. I don't want to close you. Let me close him. No. The problem is Tom Claperich, he's like you. He thinks he knows better than everyone. Truth is, he doesn't know his ass from a hole in the ground. He needs to declare bankruptcy. And he doesn't want to hear that. Well, let me keep him in the family in exchange for backing Jessica. Well, you close him. Then we'll talk. That's not so reassuring. You came to me. I didn't come to you. I'll see you on the first tee. No, you won't. Oh, oh. Uh, is this where you make your threat? I've had the carrot, now I get the stick? That's not my style. The person you're going to meet on the tee is Fred Couples. And just so we're clear, that's being closed by Harvey Specter. There's no shame in declaring bankruptcy, OK? It's a tool that will allow you to survive. You know the kind of guy I am, Harvey? I'm the kind of guy that when the clock says the game's over, take a knee, that's when I throw a Hail Mary. Everybody throws a Hail Mary when they got nothing to lose. You got something to lose. I like long odds. Let's just say I won't declare bankruptcy. What are my other options? I have an idea. You're about to ruin a property that will make you millions. I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but this is not 2007. We don't play that game anymore. The days of you high-flying people claiming you're richer than God when all you're really doing is moving assets around are over. Today, we're going to take a look up your skirt and see what you have. And I'm afraid you don't have much. The fact is, the bank is going to foreclose. Tom needs to be protected. And your plan is too big a risk. For you, yes, but not for Tom. And as I understand it, we work for him. <laughs> I work for him. You are working for me. I said he needed to declare bankruptcy, but no, you, you played it your way. Well, Jessica may give you free reign to do that. I can't imagine Hardman will. You know, Paul, Couples passed on a little tip for you. He said your game was weak because you were too cautious. I said it's not your game. It's who you are. Harvey, I may have been knocked down to the 46th floor, but bankruptcy is on the rise. I have another maneuver, a better one. Paul says we tell Tom there's no other way. But there is another way. Oh, what, you don't even want to hear it? 
course I want to hear it, since when do I take marching orders from a bow tie? There are eight projects being built in the two blocks around Madison 25. Every one of them started after it. Madison 25 is the centerpiece of the whole development. If it's not finished, they're all worthless. It's not the bank's problem. But it is, because guess what six of these buildings have in common? Nationals backing them all? Doesn't make sense for them to foreclose and devalue all their other projects. Unless they have another agenda. Huh, I wonder where we could ever find evidence of that. You think that helps us? I think we can take this to the bank. I see, that's funny because we're actually going to a bank. That's good. What happens to Madison 25 after you force it into bankruptcy? Maybe someone steps in and finishes it. Someone whose recent merger leaves them needing a large downtown address. Oh, now that you mention it, there's a little item in your shareholder letter about the search for a new corporate headquarters. Yeah, I like to read. Well, I don't. You intend to leverage this foreclosure to get a prime piece of real estate at a song. You see, Elaine, we looked up your skirt. In the six clients you represent surrounding Madison 25, well, it turns out Pearson Hardman actually reps three of them. And when the other three find out about what you've done, which will happen right after I leave here, we'll rep all six. And when we move their business elsewhere, they'll take roughly mm, a load of money out of your bank. Load? We'll give or take. Did you really miss the point of what I asked you to do? Or can you just not help being a dick? My word this time. Jessica. Your job was to make Paul happy, not take over a case and do it your way. The client's way. No, it's the client's way because you told the client it could be done. And I was right. And yet, the experts, the people I pay to know bankruptcy, feel that Paul's client, oh, yes, Harvey, Paul's client stands to put more money at risk when he can get out now and move on. This is better. This is a win-win. No. It's lose-lose, and I'm not losing this one. You are not to pitch this to the client. I can't keep it from him. You're not hearing me, Harvey. This isn't a discussion. Tell the client it didn't work. You tried. You failed. Move on. I'm sorry if Paul's ego is bruised. This isn't about his ego. It's about yours. Make it go away, and then walk away. So, Tom. Harvey has something to tell you. Did you find me my miracle? The bank agreed to alter the terms of the loan. No balloon payment. Madison 25 is safe. No bankruptcy. Oh, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, Paul, looks like you found me the right quarterback for the fourth quarter. <laughs> I won't forget this. No. <laughs> Nor will I. That a voting partner would never back me. If his mother were dying of cancer and I saved her, I still wouldn't get his vote. I know you're angry, but I took the restructured deal to real estate. That puts him in your pocket. Real estate has always been in my pocket. It's only you they hate it. And I'm beginning to understand why. This isn't me against you. Hardman is back. You are the one person I could trust. Jessica. I've always known what you are, Harvey. And I thought that was my greatest asset. Now I'm wondering if you're not my biggest liability. This isn't about bankruptcy. You're still pissed off about Mike Ross. Damn right I am. I offered to walk away. That offer was bullshit, and you know it. You hired that kid to amuse yourself, and now I'm vulnerable. And after everything that's happened, you still couldn't put me ahead of you. The client asked me to save his dream. I did. You're actually starting to believe your own bullshit. Jessica, come Just on. Just go, Harvey. I will get past this. I will move on, and I will accept that at the end of the day, that I am alone in this.